Hello, everyone. My name is Sun Yun Han from the Echo Center Nantes in France. And I'm PhD candidate and also early stage researcher number five in the Floral Project, which has been funded from the European Union Horizon 2020 Research and Maris Krovska Curry Grant. And today my talk is going to be on the hydraulic part for the floating offshore wind turbine, especially focused on the heel plate for the floating wind. And this work has been done with my supervisory teams, Dr. Benjamin Buscas, Professor Fang San Luhua, and Professor David Lutuze. And today's my talk will cover the general introduction of the floating offshore wind turbines and dedicated experimental study and numerical works also will be delivered, especially focusing on the hydraulic loads. And some interesting research, some interesting results will be highlighted according to the hydraulic loads and some up with some summaries and future work. And the plate, especially consider it as the appendage, usually widely used for the floating industries. That is because this plate can increase the damping, especially viscous damping, for the structures to reduce the motion induced by the waves. And for example, for the build skill for the ship, and skirt for the buoy, and heat plate for the classic spot platform, as you can see on the figure. And from the, the or more than 50 century, 15 years, a lot of study has been done with this plate to investigate what is the, the physical meanings with the heat plate in terms of the hydrogen loads. And this is a typical, very good example from the Thea Garzan et al. 1998, which delivered the knowledge about the jet is a non limiter damping divided by the, the mass and free, circular frequency to say that the, if the cylinder has a disc, this gives a more damping compared to the just single cylinder. And the damping itself is, can be governed by the motion amplitude, which can be referred to as the, the collicate computer number, which is the KC number. And this knowledge has been transferred to the floating wind industries as well. You can easily find this damping plate at the bottom of the floater, especially for the semi submersible floater and box-like floater from the BWEDO, to also implement the more viscous damping to the structures. But also with this plate can also give additional added mass to tune the natural frequency of the systems move out to the wave energy region. And one more interesting research on the floating wind and the heat plate is these figures, which is the, the frequency effects on the heat damping, the presented by the Lopez Pavon at all 2015. By, saying, by showing that this, the, X, the Y axis is the non dimensional damping as well, and the X axis is now the non dimensional frequency. And from this figure, we can recognize that for this configuration, the frequency has less effects on the damping compared to the previous results from the KC. And uh, we need to remind, and we need to keep in mind this, that all the configurations are based on the deep draft and also mainly focused on the heat motion. But we still have no knowledge about what happened, the effects of the heat plate on the wave extension forces given in here. And also we have less knowledge about what is the effects on the heat plate on the, with the surge and pitch motions as well. And also with the short, draft, which can be happen for the floating offshore wind. So in order to understand these kinds of the important parameters, we designed, we have several different approach. In this pre presentation, I will focus only the experiment study and numerical study with the middle or high fidelity level of the accuracy. First, the experimental work. I did the tank testing in the framework of the HE flow, which has been funded from the WIMIC and Pays de la Loire. And we designed the two test campaigns, which can be think as the diffraction test and radiation test. And diffraction test is the, with the fixed model, with the incoming waves, with the different frequency, amplitude of the waves. And radiation test means that we impose motions in the heave and surge and pitch to measure the wave the hydraulic loads induced by the motions, not the waves. And in order to understand more details about the geometrical issue, we also had the five different configuration, configurations, including the just single cylinder and the different side of the plate, 
including the pros T, 10% of pros ratio of the plate, which is the same diameter as model C. So keep, please keep in mind the model A, B, and C up to E, which also had a different draft to see the, the interaction with the plate and the free surface. And these configurations are also referred to the realistic floater design. For example, the float and floater and hyperwind and wind float and, and et cetera. And our main measurements is are the hydrodynamic loads and motions and acceleration and diffracted and rotated waves and wave runup on the cylinder surface and hydroelasticity of the plate. So in order to, to measure these, and we put the low cell in between the plate and the inner structures to measure not only the hydraulic forces, but also the inertia and gravitational rules. And also we put some several wave gauges around the, our model and also on the cylinder surface to measure the diffracted and radiated waves and also wave runoff effects due to the, the presence of the structure. And more, we also put some strain gauges on the plate to measure the flexible responses induced by the motion and the waves as well. To follow up the experimental study, we used two different numerical methods. One is the potential theory. We used the hydrostat, which is also very powerful engineering tools based on the potential theory, to, by solving the Laplace equations with the boundary element method. For this case, we, I use the two different methods, which call the source method and deeper method. And generally, I use the source method to solve the, or the configuration. But for the pros CT effects, I use the deeper method by assuming the zero thickness plate and give the pros parameter value as a five for the configuration model, configuration number, the configuration model. D, I think. And the more in detail will be done with the computational fluid dynamics CFD. I use the form style which has been co-developed between ECN and BB, and which also based on the open form framework. And I solved incompressible labia toxications with the final volume method and, and the K omega SST turbulence model to resolving some turbulence effects inside of the fluid. And for to solve the radiation and diffraction problems, I use the two different the computational domain. One is the 3D wedge model to, to solve the heave oscillation test, and the symmetric the computational domain to generate the waves to measure the, the hydraulic forces induced by the waves. For example, the number of cells here for the symmetric domain, I need uh, five million cells to have the good resolution of the free surface and the and, uh, and around the heel plate. And those two methods have the different CPU times. For example, the potential theory only take eight hours for, for solving all the frequency and heading as well. But for the CFT, I need almost two, two days to get the one single frequency. So it's quite expensive compared to the potential theory. That's why I took the CFT simulations only for the specific the frequency or specific conditions that I have some interest to have a look in detail. First, the diffraction test. As I said, the diffraction test, we restrict the body motions and generate waves. In this case, we considered monochromatic waves, bichromatic waves, and irregular waves to measure the wave extension forces on the structure. And the meaning of the monochromatic waves is can be considered it as the regular wave test. The regular waves only have the single wave frequency to exert, uh, to excite the, excite the, the the forces on the structure. And this is the example of the horizontal forces in monochromatic waves. And we could recognize that we have only single frequency response in the first time history. And after we have a look of the Fourier series analysis, we have mean, which is a zero harmonic components, and first harmonic and second harmonic and more higher harmonic components in the, in the time history. And on the other end, in the big quantum waves, which is the which has a two different wave components. And we could see that there is envelopes due to the interaction with the two wave components. And we also successfully measured the difference and some frequency components, as you can see here, the red. And which means that the, 
we could measure the slow bearing drift forces on the structures. That is also a very important parameter for the engineering in terms of the pipe power cables and the moorings as well. And I will show you briefly about the first harmonic horizontal forces. So for example, all the results are now summarized in these figures. On the left is the results at the deep draft. On the right, the results at the shallow draft. And all the colors are referred to the, the different configuration here. And the solid lines are the results from the hydrostat, which is a potential theory. And the, all the symbols with the lines are the experiment measurements. And as you can recognize that all the symbols have the different color. The empty means that 2% of the wave stiffness and transparent and solid colors means that the uh, four and 6% of the wave stiffness. So basically for the just single cylinder, the theory and theory or gives a good agreement with the, with the experiment measurements and less effects of the wave stiffness on the horizontal forces even at the deep and shallow draft. But if we have the plate, it's quite mess. But good thing is that at the deep draft, even though we increase the size of the plate, we have less effects due to the size of plate. But at the shallow draft, we have very, very significant effects due to the size of plate. And for example, here, the green lines are the results of the solid plate, and the orange is the results of the pros plate. And we could also see that pros plate can reduce the wave excited forces, especially at the shallow draft. And one more thing is that the purple is the results with the largest plate, and you can also recognize that there is a significant wave stiffening effect by reducing the horizontal forces. And on the other end, these are the results of the vertical forces, which is the first harmonic. And you can see the vertical forces on the just single cylinder just decrease monotonically with increasing the frequency, which means that this truncated cylinder only have the lift forces by acting the force on the, on the bottom of the cylinder. And these are also good because with high frequency, water particle velocity decays exponentially, which is very fast. So with high frequency, all the water particle velocity cannot reach to the bottom. So that's why we have almost zero particle forces in the, at the high frequency. But if we add the plate at the bottom, we have totally different responses. For example, the red is the similar hip with the similar hip plate, and this can slightly reduce the vertical forces compared to the single cylinder. That's why, because we now have the down forces and also lift forces, so those vertical forces can be reduced by the down forces by adding the small hip plate. And these are also good with the, with the potential theory by describing, describing the general trend of the experimental measurements. And the same thing, the pros plate also can reduce the vertical forces as well. And we, but we have some like significant difference at the raw frequency region if we have the large size of the plate. So further detail can be made with the drag coefficients from the Morrison indication. So first I defined the vertical forces as some of the force from the potential theory and drag terms from the Morrison indication. So high drag forces in the potential theory, we can simply or easily calculate by considering the instant velocity potentials and diffract diffraction potential as well by, by integrating the hydraulic pressure on the wet, wet body surface. On the other end, drag forces from the Morris indications, I utilized the vertical water particle velocity by solving this at, with the instant, instant velocity potential. And now, we saw that we have the very, very significant difference, especially for the model C at the deep draft. So we could see that with the three different, the stiffness, we have the totally different, the magnitude of the forces. So that's why I need to consider the three different, the drag coefficients from 17 to 28 to compensate the wave stiffness effect on the, on the vertical forces. But it's quite good agreement with the, if I add the drag forces from the Morrison equations to the vertical forces component. And if we compare the, like the force regimes, which is well known in the, by the Chakrabati at all, which is the, the diffraction wave forces regimes, but it's based on the horizontal forces on the bottom of circle cylinder. So it can be different for the vertical forces, but 
still it gives us a good the like meaning of the physics. For example, at the high frequency region, which gives a good argument with the potential theory, which can be seen also as the diffraction region, which also only the matter of the potential theory. But in the region one and region at the middle is the like a kind of mixed in between the potential theory and the viscous forces. And at the very low frequency, usually the viscous forces is mainly dominant compared to the potential theory. And one more step has been made with the CFD. During the experiment, we have like a limitation of the sensors because even though I try to put a lot of sensors to measure the very, very interesting physical quantities, but I couldn't put the PIV sensor, PIV sensors to measure the flow field. But with the CFD, we can overcome this limitation. So from the CFD, I did only the three points of the frequency with the, which is equivalent to the wave stiffness four. And it gives me a good agreement in terms of the first harmonic forces. And now if we have a look, the CFD simulations, which is the, the wave elevations and the flow field around the, around the plate, we, start, we can easily recognize that there is very, very strong flow separations around the plate. So it might, we need to are always aware if we want to use the potential theory for the engineering for the floating offshore wind, even if we have the heat plate. And let's move on to the radiation. And this, is, this video is like an example of the radiation test by imposing the motion in heat direction only in the absence of the waves, incoming waves. So we only have the hydraulic, we only have the, the rotated waves around the structures and this is the configuration with the largest heat plate at the shallow draft. That's why we have huge and strong wave free surface and heat plate interaction in the video. And if we have a look, the time history with a different frequency at the single motion amplitude, which is the five centimeter of heat amplitude, we still can see in the time history that the frequency gives huge effects on the hydraulic forces. And now we could also see that there is very strong first harmonic components in the first time history and less second and harmonic and second and third harmonic components due to the small heat motion amplitude. And after measuring this, we can also decompose the first harmonic components into the edness and damping by using the sine and cosine orthogonality. So this is a result. And the left one is the non-dimensional edness and right one is non-dimensional heat damping. And which also gives a good because this is a line at the deep draft both, but as you can see that we have less effects of the frequency on the edness and damping as same results we saw in the literature. But if we move on to the shallow draft, it also have a significant effects, which is very interesting. The edness decrease with the, with the decreasing the decreasing the draft, but the damping has been increased by decreasing the plate. And now the damping is start to be a function of frequency, especially at the shallow draft, the frequency is dominant for the damping. So we need to aware about, about the frequency effects if we put the, free, the heat plate close to the free surface. And let's have a look in detail about three, these three points, which is the deep draft and middle draft and shallow draft with the CFD. Now we did, I did a CFT and simulation with the wedge model, with the turbulence model KM Mega SST. So we start to see that there is a strong flow separations around the edge of the plate. And especially, we could see that there is a very, very large amount of the radiative waves at the shallow draft, but at the deep draft, we have almost no radiative waves. And all the vectors also indicate the flow, flow directions. And now if I take just one part of the snapshot, at, which is the zero crossing down, we could see that we could clearly see there is like the strong deviation due to the draft. And especially one thing is that we have very, very strong primary rotations around the plate. And we have the secondary rotations close to the free surface. And the flow has been divided by two with the down flow and up flow. And for example, at the shallow draft, you can see that these, the strength of the, the velocity is much larger than the middle and deep draft 
and also this velocity can also give a strong effects on the free surface. So we need to aware about the dissipation, dissipation energy, not with the vorticity, but also the waves and the viscous on the free surface. And this is a summary of my work on the heat plate. And further research, research, uh, further research will be delivered in terms of the second order wave loss, including the mean drift forces and slow, ring, slow varying drift forces as well and at mass and damping or drag in surge and different motion with the different KC and frequency and plate diameter will be delivered in the, our final report and journal paper as well. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. So are there any questions? So I might have a first one. Yeah. Uh, the perforated uh, heave plates, is it already something which is used? Uh, yes, it's a, because of the, the first plate can have the more for, for TST, can generate more for TST. So mm -hmm. now engineering, a lot of the engineering, for example, PWED will also start to have the pros, the hole on the plate. Mm -hmm. That is because we can increase the damping by adding the holes on the mm -hmm. plate, but mm -hmm. also we can reduce the wave excessive forces or drift forces thanks to mm -hmm. the hole. So these kinds of the knowledge also already start to be used in the en mm -hmm. engineering and, as well. And you can remove a bit of mass also, I guess, for the heat plates by doing that. So you are, it's a win-win uh, uh, game. Yeah, I that's right. Say. But okay. it also depends because mm -hmm. sometimes we need to have more added mass okay. to tune it mm -hmm. out from the wave mm -hmm. frequency. So mm -hmm. we need to always know about what is the pros and cons by considering like the pros T's or increasing the plate and etc. Mm -hmm. Yeah, confirm the interest is not in the reduction. The interest is not in the reduction of the weight of the plate with the holes. It's for the agronomic reason that uh, Sangyun said that to to limit the drift forces generated by the plate with the porosity and to, to keep, at least, to keep the same damping. Yeah. yeah, it's a very, very impressive presentation. I think uh, there could be a lot that we could discuss. Um, I would like to ask you about the, the very last part that you mentioned. So when you look at where the energy goes away when you, when you have a movement of the heat plate, um, and you were saying that it's not only through vorticity, like we see this vortex being generated, but you also mentioned two other uh, parts, saying the, the motions of this vortex and also some viscous uh, term. Could you, could you maybe come back on that and spend, uh, explain a bit better? I, I'm very interested into that. So the, the I think it was the, the almost the last slide. Yeah, this, this one, yeah. yeah. Yeah, actually there is a one good paper about the dissipation energy with the heat plate. I think it's a Garrido Mendoza from the Spain, and he had a he said he explained about the physical dissipation energy mechanism with the heat plate at the deep draft. For that case, he neglect the effects of the the waves. He only focused on the vorticity, and from his thesis and from his paper we could also saw that there is a like mathematical explanations that damping is mainly a function of the vorticity inside of the fluid domain. But there is also op assumptions about the negligible wave effects. But now if we move on to the free surface, move on to close the free surface, now we have very strong interaction with the free surface. So we don't ignore these components for the analysis. So we need to aware about the, the dispersal energy, not only the vorticity, but also the free surface and waves as well. Okay, yeah, very, very, very interesting. Yeah. And the configuration on the right, like would the, so the one where the if plate is the closest to the surface, mm -hmm. is it like realistic with respect, for instance, to the ideal platform, or where would it be in the, in case of, uh, for instance, a barge with a if plate? Yeah, that's, that's a very, very good question because in this case, the ide the ideal platform has a very, very small heat plate, which can be think as the busy kills for the ship. So in, in that case, this has the very small length of the heat plate. So it might have less the vorticity and they have, and we think it as the like a deep draft. 
So we need to always aware about the ratio in, be in between the diameter of the cylinder and plate. That is also closely related to, to, the, to the strength of the 4TSD. But in this case, it's uh, like a scientific research. So I really wanted to focus on what happened in terms of the, the dissipated energy and vortex, vortex structures with the different draft. Sure, thank you. Yep, Very nice. Uh, thank you for your very nice uh, presentation uh, and uh, topic. Um, I have a question. You you did model tests for a fixed cylinder, yeah, and uh, one where you have your move it in the heave direction. Do, do you have also uh, a model test combined, so in waves and floating and? Uh, yes, actually, it's a. Uh, I really want, want to now want to. I didn't want to do that because it's so complex. So I prefer to have like a simple surge and heave and pitch motion. But my supervisor asked me to do some more complex things. So I have data with the complex like the surge, heave combined motions and surge pitch combined motions. But it will not be here, but it will soon be delivered for Yes, I can, yeah, I, can, I can understand, and I can also, uh, it's very good that you did this separately like, like, like to, under, to understand the phenomena. I, was, I, I had just this question. Uh, yeah. also, uh, um, also, maybe to relate to the previous um, um, presentation, uh, this damp uh, if you have a mass spring system <laughs> like yeah. this motion is, then uh, the viscous damping or the damping component, you will see where it's where it goes into the uh, where you are close to the eigen frequency and your wave frequency, and there you will see the differences and where you apply. Uh, well, yeah, if you do model tests and you do calculations uh, as an engineer, uh, then you say, ah, let's tune with some CD value in your Morrison equation to get the. <laughs> Uh, the damping correctly. Yeah, that's uh, right. And, uh, so, so uh, th that's why I'm asking this. That you can maybe you can compare. Uh, hey, you have your measurements, and you can can compare with your uh, hydrostar or your CUD calculations if this damping uh, calculation is close to your measurements. And that's I think that then you need to have the combined uh, uh, wave and uh, and motions together. Yeah, it's true. So we have. Anyway, we, we, it's like our test, test setup is based on the captive test. So it cannot be freely floating. But we did like force oscillations in heave and surge and pitch, which also combined motions with the regular waves or irregular waves as well. So it, it also will be interesting to, to publish as a journal paper or scientific report for the future. Yes, we have the results. We have the measurement, experiment measurements based on that kinds of the complex physics, and it will soon be published, I hope. Okay. A final question, let's go, okay. Uh, uh, um, uh, yes, a short one. Uh, uh, the qu you, you did this open foam calculation, but uh, when you have this uh, shallow draft, it's, uh, then, then you, are, uh, you, you have not only the vorticity separation, but also that you move uh, in between the free, free, free surface and uh, your heave plate, you move the, the... Is it also captured in hydrostar, or do you, do you have to do a, a CFD calculation? You mean the, the latitude waves or vorticity? Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, not the vorticity, but that's not in hydrostar, probably, because yeah. it's potential flow. <laughs> but I was John, this, this movement of the water uh, when you are going up and down. Uh, yeah, actually, uh, hydrostar also can ca calculate the latitude waves. Okay, and I also compare the radiated waves measured here. It's a little bit out of the of the body, but it gives also good agreement with hydrostar, which okay. means that okay. the radiated waves can be estimated by using the potential flow theory, not the vorticities and viscosity yeah. effect in the system. Ah, okay. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. That's. Uh, thank you. Thank okay. You very thank much. you. So let's thank Xiumyun again for his presentation. Thank you.